Most household outlets carry about 120 volts of electrical power. That's pretty wimpy compared to the 20,000 volts your body can carry. Everything is made of atoms which are comprised of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Some atoms or materials allow electrons to flow freely through them. These are called conductors. Gold, copper, steel, and seawater are all good conductors of electricity. Other materials do not easily allow electricity to flow through them. These are called insulators. Rubber, glass, and dry wood are all good insulators. Humans would be more of an insulator than a conductor. However, we can still get shocked by electricity because the human body is 70% water. Water in our bodies contains sodium, which are positively charged ions that attract electrons. Electrons are all around us. They are very bouncy guys and are constantly looking to move from one material to another. Conductors hold on to their electrons very tightly. They don't lose electrons easily. Insulators do not hold electrons very well and electrons will jump to other material when friction is applied. This is why you can rub your socks on the carpet to create static electricity. Socks and carpet are both insulators. Electrical currents don't flow very well through socks or carpet, but with friction, electrons will jump from one to the other. If you rub two conductive pieces of metal, like two coins, nothing is going to happen. These materials, like I said, hold on to their electrons tightly. But with every step you take on the carpet, you pick up more electrons that quickly spread throughout your body. Eventually, you'll have so many electrons that no more will want to come on you. You already know what happens next. The 20,000 volts of electrons you've picked up from the carpet are going crazy trying to find a way off onto something more conductive to electricity than you are. You now have a massive negative charge. So when you go to touch a positively charged doorknob, the air between your finger and the doorknob actually turns into the fourth state of matter, plasma. And you literally create a mini bolt of lightning that you can sometimes see shoot from your finger. Sometimes you can even hear the very tiny pop of thunder. This tiny shock is the result of all those electrons you've picked up from friction jumping together onto the conductive material in the blink of an eye. Now that all those electrons have jumped, You've electrically balanced yourself and can confidently touch other conductive objects around you without much fear of shock. The static shocks that you can see and hear that feel like a tiny pinprick are about 4,000 volts. That's a lot of voltage. Especially considering the batteries that you put in your devices are commonly 9 or 12 volts. Electrical shocks are more than just volts though. Volts current and resistance all affect the severity of an electrical shock. A static shock may have 4,000 volts, but the current is very small, around 1 1,000th of an amp. For comparison, a bolt of lightning contains about 1 billion volts of electricity and a much larger current of about 20,000 amps. That's like experiencing 20 million static shocks all at once, and a much stronger static shock for that matter. Not good. Next time you're walking around on the carpet and you start to feel the hair on your head straighten up, you now know that it's because you're charged with thousands of extra electrons looking for a way out. Be careful what you touch next, or who. Join me next Wednesday for more interesting science learn how videos. Here are a couple more videos for you to watch on my channel and make sure you take a peek at the description box below for giveaways, links, and more info. Thanks for watching. I'm Mandy. You're watching Learn How. We'll see you in the next video.